Hey there, this is Bear Rapkin. Thanks again for joining today for today's webinar on uh, drone mapping, PPK, and RTK. I'm going to kick things off. Um, the agenda for today, we're going to give you kind of a basic background in drone mapping, um, go deep into PPK and RTK, give you some insights on what the onboarding process looks like. Um, we have a special limited time offer just for live attendees of today's webinar. And then I'm going to open it up for an audience Q&A um, with our CEO and founder, Dick Zeng. So for the intro to drone mapping, uh, you're seeing drone mapping used for all kinds of different industries, for mining, things like mine planning uh, and tracking progress on earth moving, and uh, tracking stockpiles and inventory. For construction, it's invaluable for um, big construction projects where you're moving millions of yards of earth, any kind of mass excavation, heavy contracting, um, knocking over mountains to put in highways, horizontal construction. For oil and gas, drones are being used heavily for things like um, well pad construction and tracking, uh, right away monitoring. For landfills, you have the challenge of you want to use the airspace uh, optimally, but you can't exceed it. Um, so rather than paying for a uh, traditional aerial survey, which may be 15 or 20 grand, every time you track it uh, with drones, you can track your volume every single day to make sure that you're optimizing your use of the space without exceeding it. And then you're seeing drones used for engineering and surveying um, to offer an opportunity to, to survey and, and track areas, um, but at a much greater speed, much higher performance, um, much lower cost, and a great way to increase the productivity of teams without having to increase headcount. Um, the general drone mapping process for a fully managed solution is you select your flight plan, you uh, activate the drone, it's going to take off, fly in a lawnmower pattern, capturing all the data, come back, land itself, the data is automatically processed into useful uh, three-dimensional progress reports and you can access and analyze your job site and get those uh, insights that you need to, to make the important decisions to run your business. Um, in general, you can capture data in around 100 acres in 10 minutes. Um, you're going to get the data back in, in hours, often the same day, and it's, uh, it's a great way to very quickly scale your drone mapping um, program throughout your company. So before we open it up for Q&A with, uh, with Dick Sang, our founder, I want to make sure everyone here is fully prepared with just a general background in what is PPK, what is RTK, what does it do for you, what are the differences between them, and how they fit in with GCPs. So surveyors and engineers play a very important role in developing land. They're often the first people on the job site and they need to map the land in preparation for construction, excavation, mining, whatever it is, landfills. And surveyors are increasingly using drone mapping as a tool to help them do their job in a variety of ways. Um, one of the advantages is safety. Uh, land surveys work is virtually always outdoors uh, and regardless of weather <laughs> and it can be 100 degrees, it can be 0 degrees uh, and it takes a lot of stamina um, and long commutes there's the additional danger of tough um, or rough terrain and having a drone mapping solution allows for autonomous flight, autonomous data collection, eliminating uh, the risks associated with land surveying. You're not having to dodge heavy equipment, um, you're not having to hike up steep inclines or, or teeter on the edge of, of cliffs um, if the drone, you know, gathering that data for you. Uh, we have a nice quote from Jason Tazi. He's a construction technology coordinator at JB Fay and I plus Icon USA company. He said, using identified, you eliminate all that risk. The amount of data you can get with no personal exposure to any kind of danger is incredible. So you're just removing people from that risk. And you could say, well, look, I don't need to do that. I shut down the job site, let's say a construction site with trucks moving around or, or mining. Uh, a mining site um, anytime I'm surveying and that's fine that's a great way to eliminate the risk but then you're taking on a pretty serious cost um, shutting down a site can mean easily hundreds of thousands of dollars a day so if you no longer have to shut it down um, obviously that's money back in your pocket another advantage of using drone mapping for um, tracking progress in areas 
is normal land surveying with the traditional method. It requires long hours carrying heavy equipment from one location to another, um, traditionally mostly done on foot, and uh, it can easily take a couple weeks or even a month to do a large job site. Now, using drone mapping, you can capture that same area with the same or better accuracy instead of in months and minutes. Um, so obviously there's a real value in, in the savings and labor there, but there's also a value in having the more up-to-date information. Um, if your information is a month old on a fast-moving job site, that means it's wrong. Old data is obsolete data. So by having data back from what was gathered that morning instead of what was gathered last month, you can very quickly respond to any uh, any issues, any inconsistencies. You can collaborate with your team. You can share uh, near real-time updates with your, your customers, your leadership, um, and address any issues before so much time or resources are invested that it's hard to um, get it back. And the other value to drone mapping, particularly for surveying and engineering, is in budgeting. Um, obviously, <laughs> you want to make an efficient use of your budget, and even if you don't have a drone mapping budget dedicated, you probably do have something. Maybe it's just for traditional surveying, maybe it's for aerial surveying, um, but drone mapping can fit nicely into that pre-existing budget, but just get a lot more data with a lot more real-time updates and a lot more accuracy for your money. So you don't necessarily have to go break out a whole new budget, you can just get more out of your existing dollars. And one thing I should mention on that, um, our most popular blog article ever is uh, it's called Why Drones Are a Surveyor's Best Friend. And I don't mean to imply for a second that drones are a placement for surveyors. They aren't. They're a tool, um, just like a electric drill is not going to replace a carpenter. Um, it's a tool to help them do their job faster, more efficiently, uh, more safely, and, and increase productivity. So what we're seeing increasingly is that surveyors, engineers, these kind of companies, uh, construction, civil engineering, mining, they're using this uh, not to replace anybody, but to actually increase the productivity and output of their team and make them even more valuable. So moving on to ground control points, or GCPs, um, before PPK, before RTK, this was the traditional way to ensure the highest level accuracy on drone mapping projects. Um, we're able to get down to a sub-inch level. And what those are is you're going to place a marker, usually an X, on the surface of the earth on a known location where you, you have that point locked down. The GCPs are tied in during data processing to georeferenced images from a project, and we convert those ground coordinates to real-world locations. Um, again, they're usually multiple feet wide. They can be two by four, spray paint, but they must be fixed in place. And what those do is they basically calibrate the data. So um, over a very large area, you know, 500 acres, 1,000 acres, they get everything locked down and tight. Um, to get down to that sub-inch accuracy. You don't necessarily need it if you're just tracking, let's say, aggregate, or um, you're trying to get sort of a pretty rough uh, volumetric range, but if you want that sub-inch accuracy, um, GCPs historically were necessary to do it. The, the headache of GCPs were they take a decent amount of prep work and time. Um, on a large site, you could need five, 10, 12 GCPs. Each one has to be laid down. Each one has to be marked so you know the exact um, geo coordinates for it so you can uh, tie those in to the data. And uh, that's particularly a headache when you're doing a lot of different job sites. If you're doing one site um, and you're going to be, let's say it's a big construction project like we're working on with Kokosing in Kentucky. So it's a thousand acres. They're going to be there working on it for three years, moving 33 million cubic yards of earth. They're laying the GCPs in so, isn't so bad. You do it once, you're set for the next three years, um, and you can use them consistently every time. But many of our customers are in engineering and surveying firms or energy firms where they're going to a new site every single day, and they only need to track that area maybe once or once a year. So to lay GCPs just for that, easily, it takes three quarters of the time they spend drone mapping is just in laying the GCP in the first place. Um, 
So for those situations, of which there are many, PPK and RTK are a beautiful, beautiful solution. So what people are able to do now with uh, the latest technology is instead of having to use GCPs, um, you're able to use GPS correctional technology to get the same or even better accuracy. It enhances the quality of location data by using global position system receivers to produce precise, accurate data. It's a technology that's um, been used in on different ways um, for a while, but it's very new to drone mapping. And uh, it's, it's only really been recently added to help you get that tight, accurate photogrammetry. Um, for applications like measuring stockpiles, uh, PPK can actually fully eliminate the need for GCPs. Again, if you don't need that unbelievable uh, accuracy. Um, so you don't, you literally need no GCPs at all. And then if you want that hyper accuracy, usually you can get away with just having maybe one GCP instead of having to lay, you know, 10 or 12 or 15. Um, we got a, a quote from just, sorry, Dustin Drost. He's a survey prior chief at Keystone Consultants. Um, that's a Pittsburgh-based engineering and consulting firm, and he told us not having to lay ground control points saves us about 75% of the time we used to spend on data gathering with the drone. Um, so it also creates smoother workflows because of that time that is shed, and it helps them increase their productivity. There's two main types of GPS correctional technologies you can use. There's post-processed kinematic, so PPK, and real-time kinematic, RTK. Uh, real-time RTK is a GPS cor correction technology technique that provides real-time corrections to location data when the survey drone is capturing photos of a site. Post-processed happens after the fact. Um, so the advantage of it is it happens after the data has already been captured and uploaded. Um, so there's a question, right, which one should you use, RTK or PPK? And We've done extensive testing, extensive research, and we found that PPK is actually the best route um, for drone mapping. And here's why we made that decision. Uh, PPK offers more flexibility in terms of the actual flight of the survey drone, meaning you have more freedom of how and where the drone is deployed. RTK requires a very specific base station and other pieces of equipment that work together in order to process the data in real time. Uh, that can dramatically increase your costs, which we'd rather not do. Um, a survey drone with PPK can refer to previous and future data relative to the current flight, which creates greater dependability. Having this ability ensures the drone is always on track with the flight. RTK has a higher chance of malfunctioning because it cannot retain old or new data to keep the current flight in check. If RTK loses its connection, even for a split second, the accountability isn't there, it, uh, it loses everything after that point. Whereas PPK, if it drops out for a second, the, the signal goes, everything else for the rest of its flight is still good. So it's much more dependable, much more reliable, and you don't have that same issue with data being useless just uh, because you drop for a second. Um, the best analogy is if you're on, the road, on a road trip using GPS on your mobile device, your smartphone, you might lose signal a couple times but gain it back quickly. PPK operates the same on the job site. If there's an issue, and its signal um, goes out, the backup data is there to keep the flight on track. It can pick the signal back up and still have useful data. RTK can't do this. If your mobile device uh, loses the signal for a second, you're lost, and you would actually have to start completely over again to get useful data. So if like many of our customers, you're currently using GCPs, ground control points, but you're interested in switching over to PPK, so you don't need to use ground control points either at all, or you can dramatically uh, reduce your usage. There's a few things you should know about the transition. Um, the flight planning is time is going to be reduced because you're not going to need to spend nearly the amount of time prepping the job site, laying ground control points everywhere. Um, we offer PPK uh, hardware and operation instructions to help make that easy. And likely your team is going to be happy because they don't have to spend a whole day <laughs> laying several GCPs, especially if it's areas that are not tracked regularly. You know, again, if you're, if you're on the job site 
every day, um, you're going back continuously, GCPs might be worth it. One of the headache though with GCPs is if it's changing so much that the GCPs are going to be covered up either by dirt or by equipment or by um, snow, then you have to lay new GCPs somewhere else uh, so you have something to tie to. So just one more advantage of PPK, you don't have to sort of worry about those fluctuations and variations. Now, even with PPK, in a, in a PPK world, GCPs are not completely irrelevant. Um, I deeply believe if you are just mapping very small um, job sites and you're doing them over a long period of time, GCPs, uh, laying them once makes sense. You don't have any increased costs. Um, the time that you spend doing it in the first place is going to be spread out over years and years of data collection. Uh, it's not that much of a headache. But the more you're doing um, kind of one-offs or just areas that are being tracked once a month, once a quarter, once a year, um, you're going to have dramatic uh, time savings using PPK. And uh, as I said, you may still need some GCPs depending what degree of accuracy you need, but you can cut down from, you know, 10 or 8 down to often just one GCP. So way, way less time, much easier to manage. And we're seeing from people regularly that, that same 75% of time re reduction in data collection. Um, and they're able to increase their productivity and performance without increasing headcount costs. So it's a pretty small upfront investment for a massive return. And it's not just in the immediate employee cost, it's also the, the cost, the impact to morale of injuries. Now, you don't have to have people worried about hazardous, uneven terrain, mud, roots, uh, hiking up, slipping, shifting aggregate piles, walking to the edge of high ledges uh, to shoot them, uh, large thousand acre job sites that may require many GCPs. Um, you are just taking people out of harm's way there. Um, so th that that's a big part of the advantage. You Not only are you increasing productivity, but you're increasing safety and taking better care of your team as well. You don't have to dodge 100-ton trucks or shut down job sites, uh, wasting equipment time or personnel time. In terms of what the onboarding process looks like, if you wanted to use uh, either uh, traditional drone mapping uh, with GCPs or the new PPK, is we don't have a one-size-fits-all program because every company is different and every company has different goals. So we start out by learning more about your goals um, your strategies, your objectives. Um, we lay out a personalized training plan, flight operations plan, um, make sure that you're getting the insights you need and know how to interpret them, and then help you uh, make it a part of your standard operating procedure, uh, scaling it up usually not just from one location, uh, but across the country and across the world. We have best-in-class support, so it's not something where we just hand you a, <laughs> a drone and some software and walk away. Um, we're a fully managed solution, so you have a dedicated customer uh, success manager who's there to help you get everything fixed um, quickly and easily if there are problems, uh, if there's any troubleshooting, if there's any training, um, any enhancements that you need. We're there providing continuous updates um, to always be there to help you. Um, we also have a available 24-7 on-site portal with information from the FAA regulations to uh, flight planning to the, the drone itself. Um, after you're initially up to speed, uh, we're still going to be checking in with you every quarter to see if you have any requests, anything um, that you need us to add. Make sure that you're aware of the, the new updates that our team has rolled out. and um, just making sure that the system is delivering the most value to you every step of the way. And we're really there to help you win more bids, complete more jobs per year, increase your profits and collaboration per job, and keep your stakeholders and your clients happy and satisfied. And in doing that, we try to help minimize your billing reconciliation delays, because now you know the progress that's been made that day instead of uh, always billing a month behind. We cut down on surprise project costs, overwork and re rework, 
uh, mass haul costs, equipment and labor costs, injuries, uh, minimize late and over budget projects, regulatory costs, and setup time. It's really big picture. We help you win more bids, track and increase profitability, improve quality assurance, and retain and satisfy your clients. So with that, I want to thank you. Um, for everyone that joined today, we actually have a special limited time offer uh, just for the live attendees. If you're interested in drone mapping and want to potentially try it out for free, if you go to our website, I'm going to put this in the chat box for everyone to see, and uh, go to this link, you just answer a couple of questions to help us understand more about the our audience's needs and what we can do to serve you better, um, you uh, stand a good chance of winning a free month of drone mapping at uh, no cost at all to you or your organization. So that's a good opportunity and likewise I'm also going to add a link for a demo if you just want to see our software in action, um, see what kind of insights and uh, data we can offer you, um, you can sign up there. So now I want to turn it over for the audience Q&A. Uh, we're going to be speaking with Dick Zhang. He's the founder and CEO of Identified Technologies, uh, an alum of uh, UPenn, um, a gifted engineer, a dedicated uh, pool player, racer, golfer. So if you want tips on uh, the back nine, he could talk about that too. Um, and he's been instrumental in us bringing uh, PPK to life. So I'm going to give a moment just so some questions can filter in, and then with those questions, um, I will turn it over to Dick to answer. So I'll give you guys maybe two minutes. Um, anything you want to know about PPK, RTK, uh, drones in general, please don't be shy, and uh, I'll look forward to turning them over to Dick. So the first question we got, this is from John, is um, just what made you decide to offer PPK at Identified? Sure. It, um, what made us decide to offer it, it probably actually came just from listening to clients and actual users um, uh, in the, you know, say construction, dirt moving, you know, mining, and materials. Um, the two primary drivers, one is speed, I'll say, uh, speed of setup. Um, the actual flight speed is the same, but then speed of processing. Um, so the before and after went up dramatically. Um, or improve dramatically, and then the second factor is probably accuracy. Uh, and so you can get close to you know PPK level accuracy with ground control points, but you'd have to lay down a ridiculous number of control points on a site. Uh, so we've been able to basically reduce the error and the noise uh, in uh, PPK data sets by almost a third versus you know, ground control points. So, so, so. Okay, Dick, perfect. Um, another question was, how does the accuracy of PPK compare to RTK? That's from Derek. Uh, sure. Um, so the accuracy between PPK and RTK is actually pretty much the same. Um, you know, in both cases, you have a rover um, that's moving around, and this, you know, in this case, a drone, and uh, you have a base station, which is you know stationary and collecting all those those collection um, files and data points. Uh, the really the only difference between the two is in RTK, you know all that fancy math to correct and post process. That's all happening as you fly, um, and with PPK, um, that same math uh, is just happening after the flight. Um, so it's the same math. You get the same results. It's just you do the corrections during the flight or after the flight. And then if I can actually extend the question and extend the answer uh, briefly, um, one of the the main advantage is actually the PPK over RTK is that, uh, you know, with the drone zooming around in the sky and, you know, there's trees and equipment, um, we actually found through testing that RTK is a bit of a hassle just because uh, you have to maintain connection and radio link and um, that, you know, that can become spotty when you're flying around with a drone. So PPK is just much more robust uh, in terms of capturing all the data you need on site consistently, uh, you know, every time. Okay, perfect. And there's there's kind of a technical question, a uh, follow-up from Derek. Between a base station that you would use with a PPK setup and one that you would use with an RTK setup, is there any difference or would that be the same base station? 
um, the GPS, you know, the the correction and all that observation for the GPS is um, actually the same. Um, the only difference is that uh, a base station that you might use for RTK, we just have to have an additional radio, link, you know, component um, so that you can hook up between the drone and the uh, uh, and the RTK base station. But otherwise, it's it's all very much identical. Hey, perfect. Uh, another question, uh, this is from Jacob, is do we provide the software um, or does SiteIQ, our software, uh, help them compare drone mapping with uh, a GPS, uh, and they may mean with GCPs, but sort of do a comparison so they can see how PPK compares to GCPs? Uh, yeah, sure. I think if I'm understanding the question correctly is, do we provide the software or, or is it included uh, such that we can compare data versus um, either ground control targets or other surfaces? Uh, and so, yeah, the, 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 the answer is yes, it can all be done. Um, whether it's, you know, comparing versus ground control um, or some kind of, uh, you know, other topo that you collected on the same day as the drone or um, you know some either original surface or design surface or subgrade um, all of that can be basically uploaded and then uh, um, it's basically a very simplified version of CAD where you can run it can fills comparisons and elevation differences um, on site IQ which is our website based uh, software tool. Okay, perfect. Uh, Dwayne asked, uh, is there an option to lease a base station uh, for the drone with, with uh, I'm sorry, is there an option to lease the base station from identified technologies to use it with PPK? Uh, yes, it is an option. Actually, the other nice thing about PPK, again, if I can extrapolate on the answer a little bit, is um, uh, pretty much any base station, uh, you know, industry standard base station, Tremble, Popcon, whoever, um, uh, all have the ability to, uh, you know, observe these GPS corrections and, and have the ability to export the appropriate Rhinox files for, uh, for the actual processing of the drone data. Um, so you can bring your own base station to the mix if you've got, you know, base stations on site. You can take, you know, pretty much uh, most rovers, you can actually turn into base station loggers. Um, or you can, if you, if you don't want to do any of the above, you can certainly uh, uh, at least one for, uh, from us, and it's just included as part of the subscription. Perfect. Um, Mr. Barzak was interested just in learning more about what all was included with our package. So, it, I mean, you, you touched on that with the last answer, but if, if they decide to partner with Identify Technologies and be a customer, can you talk about sort of both on a hardware, a software, and a services side, what all they're getting um, with that subscription? Yeah, sure, and I it certainly will do, you know, the, the whole subscription complete justice, um, <laughs> answering it over the phone like this. Uh, there's certainly more information on the website, and even if you want to schedule a demo or talk to a rep, uh, you know, we can certainly get you a more complete answer. But at the highest level, uh, again, think of it as an end-to-end, -end, you know, sort of uh, fully managed solution. And uh, all that means is the software for flight planning, the actual drone for flying, <clears throat> excuse me, the software service for processing, and then, the, you know, the website software for um, analyzing, reporting, and consuming all that data um, is all included in the in the quote unquote subscription service. Um, and then, in terms of uh, uh, you know sort of what you as a user might be responsible for, uh, you pretty much just have to flight plan, you know, circle your site with your your finger on the tablet, uh, hit go, and then uh, site IQ and you know all the other software services basically get through everything else. Um, and so if you're doing that with GCPs, you, you're welcome to do that with GCPs. If you're doing it with PPK, um, you know, you set up the base station on the drone and, and that's it. Uh, perfect. Uh, Dwayne asked, kind of piggybacking on that, so if we use Identify Technologies, um, do we have to obtain a drone pilot's license? And um, what, what does that look like? Um, can you go a little deeper on that? Sure. Um, so. Uh, I guess uh, we can dive deeper into the what I'll call the services part of the subscription. Um, and so now we're venturing a little bit outside the actual software itself. Um, yeah, in terms of the services, uh, you certainly 
the kickoff and the onboarding and the learning curve, um, we've got a you know what we call a customer success team to basically help you go through that learning curve. You know, whether you're a small contractor, a big mining company, or something in between, um, we've likely seen drone programs and you know initiated before within your type of firm. And so, um, the first part of the service is basically how do we set up SOPs, how do we set up uh, you know operating groups, how do we set up um, uh, restrictions, requirements, operators. Uh, within the firm, right, as that's step one, and then uh, uh, certainly the actual training for how to use the drone, how to actually fly, uh, you know, how to use software tools, um, that training and onboarding, and then um, preparation for the 107, um, the, you know, the FAA's legal test, um, that preparation is also included as well. So basically the, the entire sort of learning curve and onboarding uh, will hold your hand, get you going. Uh, and then as you start to use it more and more over the year, be able to help, uh, you know, make sure you're testing and realizing and using, you know, the, the, the tool and the services to their maximum uh, capabilities. And just to piggyback on that, uh, the the main person who developed our criteria is our VP of Aviation, John Little. He's been uh, either flying or teaching flying for two decades, and uh, I think we have 100% uh, pass rating uh, for the Part 107 test, so it's something we do well. Um, one one other uh, question, uh, Dick, that I think would be helpful. Is there a particular misunderstanding that you see come up again and again about PPK? Um, yeah, I think there's probably two. One is that for whatever reason, sometimes people think PPK is not as good in some dimension as RTK. Uh, I, just, not, you know, not to repeat what I said earlier, but uh, uh, we've actually found one that the the quality of data and results is pretty much identical between the two, uh, and two actually PPK is better uh, in most regards just because the processing all happens after the fact and you don't have to worry about it uh, while you're flying. Uh, and then I think the other misconception is that uh, we sort of abandon the whole concept of ground control uh, once we start using PPK and you know live in this magical world without GCPs. Um, Sure, I think uh, it's perfectly reasonable to run flights without ground control, uh, but I think just to you know set expectations for users, operators, and folks that work with the data, it's usually good to lay out at least a, you know a few um, targets, just as you know reference checkpoints, sanity checkpoints, both for ourselves so that we can ensure you know high quality de you know, delivery um, to users, but also then for you know your users within your firms, um, the checkpoints basically make everything defensible. Um, uh, so, so when you create data and draw conclusions from it, and you know share these conclusions, good or bad, you know with the rest of your your team and your your company, um, you you're able to defend the quality because of those checkpoints. I understand that now, you know, maybe people are going to be cutting down from ten GCPs down to just two or three. But do you see a world where someday uh, GCPs just won't be necessary at all for accurate drone mapping? I mean, honestly, it sort of depends on what you're trying to do. If uh, if you need data for quick checks, or you don't have to validate any third party, you know, outside of either you and your team or your company. Uh, I mean, honestly, PPK does great for that today. And um, so, I would argue we uh, almost already live in that world today. Um, the, the ground control and the, and the checkpoints are just helpful for defensibility. You know, defensibility if you need to talk to folks and interact with folks either outside yourself, your team, or your company. Right. Kind of a belt and suspenders thing. Um, so, Dwayne asked, uh, is there a minimum altitude that uh, must be maintained for drone data collection? Um, no, <laughs> is, is the short answer. Um, I mean, you, you naturally, you theoretically would want to fly higher than 10 or 20 feet just so you, you can capture any meaningful area. But, uh, um, but no, in terms of you know data capture, both with and without uh, EPK, um, I mean, we see flights anywhere from 50, 75 feet all the way to 400 feet. So uh, it's a huge range and sort of flexible based on what you're trying to achieve. Got it. Okay. And then um, Mr. Barzak asked, uh, using PPK, you know, assuming that GCPs are used, um, what's the general horizontal or vertical vertical accuracy that can be obtained? Um, Wow, okay, so that's a, a pretty big question. I think the easiest way to answer this is um, 
we're going to think about two dimensions of the data. You know, the first dimension. Well, let's first visualize. You know, you have a, a PPK, you you know, drone data set, uh, and you're looking at the cross section of that versus you know the true surface on the ground. And you know, we'll just say you shot thousands of points via uh, RTK GPS or something. Um, there's two dimensions really to look at. The first is, okay, what's the you know the average error between my you know my PPK um, uh, data set and real life or you know real world, um, and then the second is how far away am I deviating from the real world? And so you know one is average, the other is standard deviation, and it's important because you can have an average of zero but have huge swings, you know, away from away from true you know uh, ground truth. Uh, and so it's still not very useful. And so those are the two main dimensions to look at. Uh, and just what tests that we've done, and actually we've had a few of our clients run very rigorous uh, tests here, um, we've concluded that the average of the error between the drone and uh, ground truth is about one one hundredth of a foot. Um, so you're talking less than uh, basically one tenth of an inch. And then uh, the uh, standard deviation and spread of the error, so how wavy is the data, um, that comes out to uh, just under an inch. Um, so that's sort of just two, you know, two ways to look at it uh, and quantify it. Okay, that's a perfect answer. Uh, Jacob just actually asked, you know, are you talking more like sub-inch accuracy and, and what accuracy are we looking at? So that, that actually answered two questions at once, um, which is great. Um, I guess the, the last question I see here is for the people that are already using uh, standard drone mapping, what does the transition look like for them to get onboarded for PPK and, uh, and kind of transition their solution over to PPPK? No, it's, uh, it's delightful. I mean, uh, um, the actual flight planning is nearly identical if you're going from one of our non-PPK you know, units to now PPK units. And it's the same for if you're coming from another drone um, over to this PPK unit. Um, so the uh, uh, the flight planning is the same, you know, data processing, there's nothing different that, you know, a user has to has to worry about. Set IQ and software will take care of all the differences. Um, really the only difference is either set up a base station, you know, when you go out to fly, or if you already have one on your site that's just perpetually running, um, just need to capture the, the log file for when you were flying. Uh, and that's really just hitting an on switch or, or you know, hitting that support on the file. So uh, fortunately, the transition is very, very, uh, very simple. Perfect. Um, Dick, I'm seeing a lot of thank yous in the question list. So I, I know you've given a lot of good information to our audience. Um, I want to thank you for joining and, and sharing uh, with everyone and uh, for all the attendees. I know you're busy. Uh, thank you so much for spending some time with us this morning. Uh, if you do have follow-up questions, anything that you think of later or we didn't get to touch on, please go ahead, go to identifiedtech.com, request a demo, um, you know, read some, some resources, some white papers, and uh, if there's anything that you want to learn more about, we would love to answer your questions and uh, hopefully work with you in the future. So, Dick, thank you so much, and everyone who joined, uh, pleasure speaking with you. Yep, thanks, Blair. Thanks, guys.